Okay, uh, welcome YouTubers. We got another uh, Pure Gospel Fellowship today. Just trying to fix the camera here. And unfortunately, uh, I had some of my old trophies kind of fall on me uh, last week. So, uh, I'm just going to be uh, preaching from here today. And like I say, if you're looking on Facebook right now, the words are backwards. But it um, has nothing to do with the message. Okay, like I say, these are just old trophies from uh, some street preaching that I did. <clears throat> so anyway, um, just going to start off with a little fluff. I actually give you some announcements. Uh, number one is um, we will not have Pure Gospel Fellowship on the 22nd. That's uh, not next Sunday, but the following Sunday. And... Actually, a very good reason for that is uh, I will be traveling to New Orleans and preaching. Actually, um, the girls, uh, my wife and two daughters, they're traveling to New Orleans on Tuesday. And they're going to be there for three weeks. Three weeks! But anyway, um, I'm going to be traveling over to up there during my weekend off and do some street preaching while I'm there. Because, you know, I know some street preachers there, and uh, they're excited to have me come up there and preach, and so I'm, I'm excited about going up there and preaching. But with the traveling back from New Orleans, there's just no way I could do the uh, Pure Gospel Fellowship. So uh, in two weeks, there'll be no Pure Gospel Fellowship. I know you're sad about that, but, you know, I'll, I'll keep uh, coming back and, you know, probably get some good uh, street preaching videos out of it. I'm hoping to preach uh, two times while I'm up there, but you know, one time will be will be good as well. Anyway, we're back to the series. You know, God has interrupted the series a few times, and you know, that's His prerogative. He wants to do that. That's great. But we've been talking about biblical prosperity, and uh, the Bible should be our first and final authority on every issue. So when we talk about prosperity, and you know, we've gotten, it's been abused. It's been abused, and you know, ministries taking verses out of context, and all that sort of thing, and we need to find out what the truth is. We do that by a holistic approach. We take the whole Bible into account. So we look at the entire Bible, and we look at this issue. So we're going to be continuing in that today, uh, talking about Jacob again. And uh, before we get started, I just want to uh, pray real quick. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Now all kinds of people watch my channel. Atheists, Pastafarians, Muslims, they all watch my channel. You're going to pray this prayer. You're going to pray this prayer after me. You may hate me, you may hate God. But you're going to pray this prayer after me. Okay, let's pray. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. In your precious name, amen. Some of you didn't pray then. I know, I, I know it in my spirit. Some of you didn't pray then. So we're going to try this again. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, speak to my heart, change my life, in your precious name, amen. Okay, let's get started today. Like I said, we've been talking about Jacob, and the last time we had a Pure Gospel Fellowship, we were talking about the three tests for Jacob's blessing. So we're going to be uh, sort of backtracking a little bit, starting off. Uh, a little bit before that incident and just talking about Jacob and we'll, we'll try to get we'll try to get as far as we can with this now one of the common stories known about the Bible with um, Isaac Rebecca and Esau and Jacob is when Jacob stole Esau's blessing now we already talked about before how Esau sold his birthright. 
sold his birthright to Jacob for uh, a bowl of stew. Okay, God did not appreciate, you know, God didn't like that. One thing, he gave up his birthright to satisfy his flesh. So his heart was definitely not in the right spot. But here we got the blessing. And Isaac, okay, he knew about the prophecy, but he still wanted to bless Esau. Remember the prophecy spoken before Esau and Jacob were born is that the elder shall serve the younger. So, Rebecca knew about the prophecy. Isaac didn't want to consider the prophecy. So, Rebecca hatched a plan and made Jacob seem to be Esau. And so Isaac blessed Jacob, which is what should have happened. Which is what should have happened. So now we're um, we're gonna pick up a little bit after that, and okay. So now Jacob has Isaac's blessing. So now Isaac told Jacob, okay, you can't get a wife here in Canaan. You must go to Paddan Aram, to the house. You know your ancestors are there your mother's father, and find you a wife there. So I'm going to pick up, we're going to follow along Genesis chapter 28, verse 3, Genesis chapter 8, no, Genesis chapter 28, Genesis chapter 28, be verse 3. And we're going to be, we're going to be in Genesis today. We'll be in Genesis the whole time today. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not a bad thing to use the Old Testament. You know, the Old Testament takes a beating. It takes a beating with some of these pastors out here today. In fact, I've heard about one pastor say, we shouldn't even have the Old Testament in the Bible, which is ridiculous. Okay, I, I'll agree that the Old Covenant was in the Old Testament. Now we have a New Covenant. I will totally agree with that. But in the Old Testament, we have the prophecies of Jesus. We have the reasons why we needed Jesus in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament has prophecies that haven't even happened yet. So I think we should know about the Old Testament. I really do. So... Right here, Genesis chapter 28, start at verse 3. And God Almighty bless thee. Okay, this is Isaac talking to Jacob. Make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. Once again, we see a reference to the blessing of Abraham which went to Isaac and now from Isaac to Jacob. If there ever was a testimony to obedience to God to not only your blessing but for the blessings to generations after you should the Lord tarry, it's this. Abraham obeyed God. It's counted him unto righteousness and it produced a blessing in his life and the lives of his children and grandchildren. Blessing follows obedience. We'll see that over and over again as we look through the Bible, talking about prosperity. Blessing follows obedience. Obey God. He will bless you. And if you want to leave an inheritance to your children and to your grandchildren, obedience to God. Obey God. Okay. And I'm going to read a verse right now that proves this. Okay. And that Jacob, or Jacob obeyed his father and mother and was gone to Paddan Aram. So right here we see Jacob 
obeying his parents, obeying his father's his father's instruction, you know, go go to Pananarum, find your wife there. Now let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when, when Jacob obeys. Okay, and we have a Jesus prophecy. Okay, now here we're now here in the later in this chapter is uh, Jacob on his way to Pan of Aram. And then uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Jacob finds a place to rest for the night. And he sees the, the ladder and the angels coming up and down the ladder. And um, God speaks to him. Actually, I'm going to start in verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it, above the ladder, Jacob's ladder, and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land where um, thou liest to thee, will I give it unto thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed, to thee and to thy seed. In thee and in thy seed. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Jesus, a descendant of Jacob, later called Israel. We have Jesus and all you know the blessings available to everybody today through Jesus. Okay, so Jacob wakes up the next morning. Builds, uh, builds uh, some stones there, a kind of a pillar. And uh, let's move to verse 20. Verse 20. And Jacob bowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat, and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. Okay, that's why it's called Bethel. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. There wasn't a temple yet. And yet, Jacob's talking about giving the tithe. Yes. Yes. So all these people don't want to hold on to all their money hold on to all their money and spend it on their lusts tithe right here so Jacob vowed to give a tithe to God out of everything that he made <clears throat> so right here I mean we see this over and over Abraham paid the tithe Jacob paid the tithe vowed to pay a tithe so to say that it's just for the temple, and now there's no temple, so we don't have to pay a tithe, is ridiculous. You should give 10% of your money to God's work. To God's work. You should. And if this is your, if this is your way, when you know, if this is like your church, then you should give 10%. But you should give that money towards God's work. Okay, we're going to skip ahead right here. We're going to skip ahead. We're going to talk about Laban for a little bit. And I want you to turn to chapter 30. Okay, so Jacob does go to Padam Aram and sees Rachel. And he's like, hey, this I need to meet this girl. So uh, Jacob... Uh, Sort of, as, as we say here in the South, took a shine to Rachel and uh, met her father Laban. And, you know, Laban's, hey, this is, this is great, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you Rachel. And Laban was, was a swindler. I mean, Jacob, Jacob, the actual name, that literal name for Jacob is uh, kind of a swindler. Well, actually, literally, it's one who grabs the heel. So it came to mean a swindler, a supplanter, you know, grab, grabs the heel. 
you know, a trickster. But actually, Laban, Laban should have been called Jacob. I mean, he's just continually swindling. So Jacob says, I'll work for you seven years for Rachel. So uh, Laban's like, okay, seven years, good deal. So Jacob does his seven years for Rachel. And, you know, seven years comes up. Jacob says, hey, you know, I want, I want Rachel to be my wife. So Laban gives him Leah instead and not Rachel. And uh, I guess he didn't notice. He didn't notice. And imagine what that felt to Leah. I mean, I'm sure she heard around the house, Jacob, you know, agreeing to work seven years for Rachel. And, you know, Jacob's always talking about Rachel. And she knows that in the morning, she's going to find out. Well, Jacob's going to find out. I mean, imagine what that was like for Leah. You know, he will find out, you know, I'm not Rachel. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's not, he's, you know, he's not going to be happy. He's going to be angry. And Jacob was angry. Laban, once again, being the swindler he is, well, you know, we don't, we don't marry the, the younger before the older. I mean, just work for me another seven years and you'll get Rachel. So Jacob gets Rachel and then works another seven years. And uh, what we have here is a little bit later. Okay, now, now Jacob's getting ready to leave with his now four wives and their children. And uh, chapter 30, verse 27, And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. So Laban wants Jacob to stay. For I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. So Laban understood this. He says, you are blessed. Jacob, you have blessings on you. And I'm being blessed through you. So I want you to stay. So Laban recognized that blessing. But he didn't do the, he didn't do the right thing, as we'll find out later. So um, Jacob says, no, I'm not going to stay. Give me my wages. I'm, I'm going. So Laban's like, okay, okay. Uh, ask, ask for your wages, and then that'll be your wages. Okay, good deal. So Jacob said, I'm going to pass through the flock. If it's speckled, spotted, um, spotted, speckled, spotted, brown, among the sheep, you know, the goat, you know, the, the goats and the cattle, that's going to be my wages. And Laban's like, okay, that's a good deal. Okay, that'll be your wages. Look what Laban does, though. Look what Laban does. In verse 35, And he removed that day the he-goats that were ring straight and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob. Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. So right there, Laban, true to his nature, tried to swindle Jacob again. And he had just said, I see that I'm being blessed through you. You have blessings on your life, Jacob. So he's trying to swindle Jacob for that. And this is a word for some of those people out there. You need to start bless, bless the people that have God's blessing on them. How do you get God's blessing? Through obeying God. Through obeying God. So, he tried to swindle them. And what, what did Laban end up with? Almost nothing. So, he sees God's blessing upon him. And he tries to take that blessing for himself. And he ended up with nothing. 
or next to nothing. So right there we see, if you see God's blessing on your life, on someone's life, bless them. Bless them. And uh, this is a word for some of those people. If someone wants to bless you and, and you're obeying God, take the, bless, take the blessing. Take the blessing. Some people are like, hey, you know, I'm not going to take anything. I'm not going to take anything from you. But if you take a blessing from someone, they get blessed. You know, that's what Paul said. Paul said, you know, I want, I want there to be credit to your account. Now, Paul, of course, did not charge for preaching, but he did collect, you know, take collections for the saints in Jerusalem. So he said, I want, you know, give to me and I'll give to them. And, you know, I'll, I'll take the blessings for them, and uh, I want this to be to your account. So, if someone wants to bless you, and, uh, you know, you're right with God, you're obeying God, take the blessing, take the blessing. Now, of course, I mean, use some discernment, you know. You know, if they want, if they want to bless you, with, you know, with, uh, with a night at a strip club or something, I mean, you know, of course they know something like that. Or they want to bless you with a with a bunch of Gucci Mama clothes for your children. I, you know, don't take that. You know, I'm, be, I'm just you know use some discernment. But if they if you're if they bless you, they get a blessing. You see, it's 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 transferred that way. So while Laban, who was blessing Jacob with uh, with with wives and that sort of thing, he got a blessing from that. But then when he tried to swindle Jacob and take, you know, take his wages, then Laban ended up with nothing. So, bless those who have God's blessing on them. And be sure to testify about them. If God blesses you, be sure to testify about it. Okay, I'm going to read two verses right now. Uh... One in chapter 31 and one in chapter 32. And we're going to illustrate this last point here. Okay, so Genesis chapter 31, verse 32. These pages will just stick together. Okay, so now Jacob is talking with Laban. Okay, so Jacob leaves. Laban comes after him. And uh, the whole thing with the household gods, I'm not going to mess with that. Except the God of my... Okay, this is Jacob talking to Laban. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac, have been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God hath seen mine affliction, and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. So, here... Jacob is testifying to Laban and saying, if God hadn't blessed me, I'd be going away empty. I would, I would be going away with nothing except God had blessed me. And you know, this is a word for those street preachers out there. You know, make sure you testify about your blessings. What am I talking about? What is the greatest blessing? Okay. God's presence. God's presence. How do we get God's presence? We get right with Him. We get born again. So you need to testify and tell people, hey, I'm born again. I'm right with God. I, you can be too. And just tell them, you know, because people see, people notice. People notice. You know, if you're walking around with a smile on your face, you're always content. You know, you always have peace about you, even though things might go wrong. People notice that. People notice that. I remember um, when I was uh, working in Washington, and uh, one morning, you know, just people weren't coming into work. You know, they were calling out, you know, calling in sick. And so I'm trying to get things divvied up to where I can get all these routes covered for today. And someone, someone else calls. And says, look, I just can't come in today. And I responded first, like, oh my goodness, I can't, you know, I can't believe this. I can't believe they can't come in. 
But then the calm came over me. And I said, I said, all right, you know, I could tell the person wasn't, you know, wasn't lying, you know. I mean, this, and that she had some angst about it, you know. She wanted to come into work, but she couldn't. Um, I said, hey, that's okay, you know, you need to stay out, stay out. And people noticed that. And they said, hey, I can't, I can't believe you responded that way. You know, and they, so people notice. If you got that peace about you and you have that contentment about you, that only comes from knowing God. If you're, if you're constantly trying to satisfy your flesh, no peace, no contentment. Because your flesh is always going to want more. The flesh always wants more. But if you, if you, um, if you spend your life trying to glorify God and obeying His commandments, you'll have contentment, you'll have peace. And people notice that. So testify. People say, how can you how can you react that way? How can you be, you know, you seem to have some, what's going on? He says, it's because I know Jesus. And you can have the same thing. And read one more verse. Be uh, chapter 32, verse 12. Okay, now this is when Jacob's coming back. And uh, he sends a message to Esau and says, hey, I'm coming back. And he finds out that Esau is coming to meet him with armed men. And he's thinking, oh my goodness. Okay, Esau's mad about everything. He's going to come, he's going to destroy me. So now he's reminding God of what God said to him. So this is Jacob talking to God. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for multitude. So, so Jacob here is reminding God of, of the blessing that he spoke over him. And uh, I know this has been abused, but you should do this. You should remind God of the blessings that has pronounced upon us. All these promises in this book, all the promises in this book, they're yours. They're yours. And say, God, look what, look what you promised me. Look what you promised me. Study. Study these promises. Find out what's available to you. Now, you could have a million dollar check somewhere with your name on it, but if you don't know about it and you don't claim it, you, okay, you're not going to have that. So, you have a check here with your name on it. And no, I'm not saying that you should be um, confessing these promises to get bigger houses and better cars and, you know, have all this stuff to satisfy your flesh. The greatest promise that you should be looking for, the greatest promise in this book is God's presence. Okay? You're not going to be in heaven, you know, with stuff. The greatest thing in heaven is God Himself. So you will be in the presence of God. And that is greater than any blessed material blessing here on earth. Is being with God. Being with Jesus. How many of you, we're all, we all got that appointment, we're going to be standing before the white throne to be judged by Jesus. You want Jesus to look at you and say, depart from me, I never knew you. Or do you want him to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter in. Enter in. You're going to be with me forever. That is the greatest blessing. That's the blessing, God, you promised that you would be with me. God, I'm going to feel your presence. You're going to feel, your pres You're going to feel his presence in a little bit. And those of you watching later on YouTube, same goes for you. So, we'll close this out for today. And maybe you've been watching today, and you say to yourself, you know, I'm not right with God. You know, you're talking about these blessings, and you're talking about having peace and having contentment, and I don't have that, and I know it's because I don't have Jesus. Okay? We can, we can fix that problem. You can be born again in a few minutes. Or maybe you can say to yourself, hey, you know, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was with this, you know, 
I was I was on fire for God and I let, I let my fire go out. You know, and the world's gotten in. Think about what you're watching on TV. Think about the movies that you're watching. Think about the video games that you're playing. And see if those are things that glorify God. Or do they actively go against God? If you can sit there and watch a TV program and watch blasphemies against God, blasphemies against Jesus, that doesn't grieve you? If you can sit there and watch nudity, men and women getting naked, if you can watch uh, sexual scenes and that doesn't bother you, that doesn't grieve you, okay, you're backslidden. You're backslidden. You let your fire go out. But we can stoke that fire. We can let that fire burn bright again. Okay, if that's you, if you say to yourself, hey, I'm not right with God, or maybe you were right with God, you need to get right with God now, I want you to kneel. If you're comfortable doing so, I want you to kneel right where you're at. I want you to repeat a prayer after me. Okay. Here we go. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against others. And I've sinned against myself. Forgive my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Show me my purpose so that I can serve you. In your precious name, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer with me, I want to hear from you and encourage you. And my other uh, sermons are available on this channel. Uh, but if you're watching on Facebook, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, EC Street Preacher, and uh, there's a playlist, Pure Gospel Fellowship, you can watch those and, and, and uh, be edified by the sermons that I've given. And now I'm getting ready to pray for everybody. Uh, okay, so um, if you have a physical ailment, you know, healing's available to you. You know, you have access to the greatest physician, Jesus. Everybody that came to Jesus with a physical ailment got healed. Everybody that came to Jesus. There wasn't a single time that someone came to Jesus for healing and Jesus said, no, no, God's, God's trying to teach you something through this. Never, never said that. Never said that. Our, our people coming to him and he, he just said, well, you know, you're just not right. You're not right with God. You know, you got all this sin in your life. And, you know, he healed them. He healed them. Okay, it's not, not to say he didn't preach against sin. He did. But he, he would, everybody that came to Jesus, everybody that came to Jesus with an illness was healed. Everybody. And some people, he just walked up and healed them. The, 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 the man with the infirmity didn't really know who he was. And Jesus said, stand up, take your mat and walk. He was healed right then. So we have. So if you have a physical ailment on your body, if you're and if you're comfortable doing so, just place your hand right there, right now. Uh, if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, open yourself to that. Or maybe you just want to feel God's presence all over you. There's nothing like. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it on this world to compare to God's presence. You know the Word says, the "Presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy." fullness of joy. You have joy in your life through God's presence. So here we go. I'm getting ready to pray for everybody. Lord Jesus, I ask you to send down the Holy Spirit now and touch these people. In Jesus' name, pray that you heal their bodies, fill them with the Holy Spirit, baptize them in the Holy Spirit, and fill them up with your presence. Okay, I, I, I'm getting something from the Lord right now. Someone, there's a, there's a problem with your brain. It's swelling in the brain. It's water. 
on the brain. And right now God is dissolving that. And you'll find right now that there is no pain, no pain at all in your in in, in your in your in this area, this head you, you know, in your head. Okay. I'm getting something that someone else, your your right ear, your deaf in your right ear, it's something that's internal. There's some kind of problem in in your middle ear and uh, you haven't been able to hear. You haven't been able to hear. Sometimes you have vertigo through this. God is healing that. Right now, if you, and if you cover your left ear, you'll find that you can hear clearly through your right ear. Uh, I'm getting someone else. Um, someone, you're missing some teeth. It's uh, the, the, the cuspid and, and right here. Uh, I can't remember exact names for the teeth right now. But these two teeth up here, you got some four front ones. This one right here is missing. And then your cuspid right here is missing. God is replacing those with new teeth right now. Someone, there's something wrong with your with your bladder. You have a bladder infection, and God is healing that right now. Uh, someone else, uh, your left leg up here, the femur has been broken, and God is knitting that femur back together. Uh, someone, your left knee has been replaced, and God is replacing that replacement with real bone. And if you move that knee right now, you find that you can move it. There's no pain. There's no stiffness. And it's been the first time in someone, your left foot is a flat foot. There's been no arch, but God is making an arch right now. And someone with, an, with arthritis in their right hand that is being healed right now. And you find, if you check it right now, you find out that she can move with no pain. And I thank you for all those miracles, Lord. And before I sign off here, I just want to make one humble request for you, if I can say it right. Humble request, please pray for this ministry. Please pray for Pure Gospel Fellowship. I need your prayers. I absolutely need your prayers to continue this ministry. You know, um, I'll do this however God wants me to do, and I'll do this, you know, continually. As long as I'm able, should the Lord tarry. And uh, I want this ministry to grow. And the only way this ministry is going to grow is through prayer. So please pray for this ministry, Pure Gospel Fellowship. And uh, we will be here. I will be here next Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I am planning on preaching uh, this, this, you know, this, uh, this week. I didn't preach uh, uh, last night. Um, just uh, the weather was kind of iffy, and uh, you know I want to spend some time with my family before they uh, before they leave uh, to New Orleans. It's going to be on Tuesday. So, uh, but I will. I am planning on uh, street preaching. Uh, you know, weather permitting, uh, this Saturday. And uh, but we'll be here again uh, next week. So this is uh, EC Street Preacher, and I'm going to sign out for now.